Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. And our next guest, who is uh, now running for Congress in Michigan, well, back in uh, August, we reported that he won his uh, House of Representatives primary. And why is this important? This is Kurt Haskell. And um, he defeated fellow Democrat Ruben Martinez, and he's facing Republican Tim Wahlberg in no November. And, you know, why are we picking this particular race in Michigan to highlight? Well, Back in February of the same year, Kurt Haskell went uh, to the sentencing of the underwear bomber and the court case going on in Michigan. And he read a statement that basically indicted the federal government in collusion and cover up. Uh, basically, anything you could go after the government on with this case, he, he said it, it was all there. And we put out a four part interview series, which you can find on YouTube. Um, on the Alex Jones channel, detailing different facets from him being on the plane, witnessing the event, to witnessing the cover-up right after it, to witnessing the cover-up going on in the case, and then finally, the different admissions from government officials, specifically one Patrick Kennedy, which we just read his quote, where he talks about how if we would have gone after this guy, it would have revealed that we were actually looking at his group. So they let him on the plane. They admitted it. Uh, let's go back to uh, May 10th, 2012, the Al-Qaeda underwear bomber, another foiled false flag. This is from one of our writers, Stephen Lindman. Um, and basically, he just kind of details all the different fabrications and lies that, that went with this underwear bomber thing. And then now coming up to July 27th, TSA chief Al-Qaeda altered underwear bomber formula. So now we have Al-Qaeda saying, we're going to mix the formula a little bit. Well, here's the problem. It doesn't matter what they put in this bomb. Um, they never provide the person, the patsy that they stick on the plane with a proper blasting cap to even make the bomb detonate. And so there was the same thing with the shoe bomber. This guy was trying to light his shoe, light, um, his shoe bombs on fire with, with a, a lighter. It wasn't going to work. Same thing with Abdul Farouk Matalib. And so with that, we turn to Kurt Haskell, who's running for Congress in Michigan, coming up in this election, which will be next week. Kurt, how's it going today? Hey, good. Glad to be on the show. Excellent. Uh, we love having you on because uh, it's good to see people standing up for America, you know, and, and I mean that in the real sense, not in the Fox News sense where America means going to war and bombing brown people, you know. So how is your campaign going now? Uh, what are your thoughts going into this, and are you excited? You know, um, I'm excited to have it done. It's been a long road. It's been a lot of work. A, a great, you know, a great deal of my time has been put into this since uh, March 3rd when I got into it. Looking forward to have it done win or lose just so I, I can get some sleep and a little bit of rest so excellent well let's go over your platform i was looking at it um you know rebuild america's middle class rebuild our restore our economic competitiveness you've seen firsthand what's been going on with the deindustrialization of america why don't you talk a little bit about that well sure you, you know you can see it here in, in michigan where you know we have the auto industry and we have treaties like nafta for instance that has allowed 1 million manufacturing jobs to be sent out of the United States. And it's no coincidence that Michigan's taking a hit. We hit. Our economy here is devastated. People are leaving the state left and right, and people are wondering why. Well, you don't have to look too far to see some of these treaties that we have sending our jobs out of the country. So, you know, it's pretty obvious what's happened here, but nobody's doing anything about it. Right. And and just to play the, the fake two party system political game that was uh, signed by Bill Clinton and something that Al Gore even defended on Larry King Live to uh, when he was talking with Ross Perot saying, oh, it's not going to do any of that stuff, Larry. Don't listen to Ross Perot. As Ross was saying, hey, this is going to take jobs and ship them to Mexico, which then they shipped to China after that. Well, it's, it's pretty obvious to see, you know, when you figure somebody in Mexico makes a dollar an hour and, and here in Michigan they make a lot more than that. Well, where are these companies going to send the jobs? They're going to send them where they can pay workers a dollar an hour. Right. It's not, hard, it's not hard to figure out. Exactly. And what, what happens with that extra money that they were saving, it goes into giant bonuses. And you see these corporate salaries since the mid-80s just fly off the charts. Well, exactly. And the workers get get the shaft, basically, and you have nobody in Congress even admitting this or, or, or stating this on the record and standing up for the working people of the country. 
which is part of what I want to do. You know, I'm not tied into any of these corporations or special, special interests that push through treaties like this in order to benefit the ultra wealthy, you know, and the corporations themselves. Right. I, I, I support the people of the country. And you know how I can tell that? Because you support the Second Amendment. And that is, that guarantees the First Amendment, first of all, and it guarantees everybody the right to protect themselves. And I mean, you know, the police in Detroit have basically said, enter at your own risk. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, and not, you know, I don't support just the Second Amendment. I support all of them. So very strongly. And I, I think that's something that's lacking in Congress, in Congress, people that actually stand up for the Constitution. So that that's another very strong point um, that I'm making and in, in part of my platform. Now, if you were to become a first-term congressman, what, what sort of things, what would you go after in the beginning? What kind of, um, you know, splashes would you like to make right off the bat? You know, I haven't gone into into a lot of detail thought about what I want to do exactly, just kind of general principles that I've thought about, which is restore the Constitution. You know, obviously, laws like the Patriot Act need to go. Uh, you know, we can't have the TSA running wild at the airport, you know, feeling people up and looking at uh, people naked through their body scanning machines, you know, and things like that. I, I think... The, the security state that we're in now, where we have this huge chunk of our budget going to uh, wars overseas that are not needed and a huge amount being spent on the war on terror and the loss of constitutional rights that goes along with it here in the United States needs to stop. Things like that, as well as something I mentioned a little while ago, um, some of our treaties sending jobs overseas. So those are a couple of things I'm focusing on. Any more specific than that, I haven't given it a great deal of thought to this point. And your opponent, uh, what, what's his name, Tim Martinez, uh, Tim Wahlberg. Tim. Yeah, and uh, you, you have a little comparison. What, what are some of the things that you don't like that he's doing and you think he needs to be removed from office? Well, Mr. Wahlberg is well known to represent the interests of the large banks, Wall Street, and the large corporations. They donate a significant amount of money to his campaign. And, you know, he uses it to continue to get reelected and then gives all the people of the country the shaft, not only economically, but continues to vote against their constitutional rights, having voted for the Patriot Act, CISPA, um, H.R. 347, and things like that, uh, while continually voting for the interests of the corporations, too, you know, destroying the economy and sending jobs. He's my opponent's not very well liked to people that are actually paying attention to politics. So unfortunately, he has a great deal of money, so he can spend uh, what he's doing and lie through the media and that sort of thing. So some people actually that aren't paying attention actually think he's doing a good job. Right, he he's can throw out that image of "I'm a great guy, just vote for me," and I'm I'm for the little man, even though he never really talks about what he actually does for the little man. Exactly, or he flat out lies about it. Right. Exactly. Well, let, let me ask you this. You, you've you basically stood up to the government on many levels. You stood up to the FBI. You stood up in court uh, to read statements. You were basically called, you know, um, a, a conspiracy theorist by the judge. Uh, did, did that prompt you to basically come forward and then start, you know, since you didn't see any recourse, like nobody was listening on, on the federal level to you, did that make you just say, hey, I'm, I'm just going to run for Congress. I'm going to start changing things. No, no, because I could have filed a lawsuit against the government. I chose not to. And actually, me running for Congress has more to do with the redistricting that occurred in January, moving Monroe County, where I live, out of John Dingle's district and into Tim Walbert's district. So it has much more to do with that. However, um, you know, the my thoughts on what are going on in Washington, you know, I don't have a very high opinion on what's going on in Washington. Uh, you know, I think we need transparency in government so that the people can actually know what's going on in Washington. So I suppose that, that would tie into the underwear bomber case somewhat, seeing that, you know, I'm very much a supporter of transparent government. And what I saw during the underwear bomber case is exactly the opposite.
Right. And what did you feel about this article that came out in July 27th at, at the Huffington Post? Al-Qaeda has altered the underwear bomb formula. Uh, the headlines, TSA chief, Al-Qaeda altered underwear bomb formula. And it's out of the Huffington Post from July 27th. And they're basically going into, hey, now they're making a new type of bomb that we have to look out for. And not even talking about the fact that the underwear bomber couldn't have even ignited his bomb if he wanted to. I actually didn't read that article. I didn't know about it. But if what you're saying is true, then it's just a complete fabrication because obviously the the underwear bombing case, uh, in the underwear bombing case, the bomber was provided his defective bomb by an undercover agent of the U.S. government. So how can we now say Al-Qaeda is changing the formula when Al-Qaeda didn't even make the first bomb? So it must just be a pure propaganda piece. Totally agree. Now, how, how do you feel if you do win? You're going to be going into a pit of vipers, uh, uh, men that have no uh, men and women who have no, um, I guess, faith in humanity other than the paychecks that are coming their way from their, their corporate masters. I mean, how are you going to stand up to that? Um, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to be kind of a, an island in the middle of all this. It'll be nothing different than what, what I've been going through since 2009. Christmas Day 2009. So, you know, anyone that followed that case knows that I stand for truth and justice and a transparent government, and I will do whatever it takes to, to speak out about that and to try and achieve those goals. I could care less if every single person is against me if I'm doing the right thing. And that's exactly what I'm going, going to do in Washington uh, to try and bring about a transparent gov government and try and change public opinion to to inform uh, different people in the public on uh, you know some things that are going on in Washington, which maybe they want to be too happy with. Right, is they're really. I mean, when I look at the government, I just I think of these people that just want to control our lives, tell us what to do, tax us till we can't really do anything else other than work harder just to maintain that same level of uh, standard of living that we've enjoyed. Now, um, how do you feel about uh, QE4, this unlimited, I guess it's QE3 now, who, who's keep, who can keep count? But basically, $40 billion a month going to pay off the banks every month to try to keep this housing bubble inflated. I mean, is this something that we should be concerned with? Yes, entirely. I, frankly, I don't know why the country is not in more of an uproar over it. I, I guess they're just not paying attention, but... Um, QE3 is basically unlimited money printing by the Federal Reserve Bank to lower the value of the dollar uh, just to keep, you know, the housing market in Wall Street infl and inflated. So it's completely against the interests of the people of the country because when you print more money, what it does is it causes steep inflation, which you're seeing in food and gas prices because the, the dollar is going down in value, so therefore... The cost of imports are going up, and therefore, people that pay more of their income towards food and gas, the lower class and middle class, are getting hardest hit while the wealthy are having very little effect to them. So it's completely destructive to the economy. And, you know, and, and you're seeing it in this country. The middle class and poor are, are going down and as far as their standard of living. The rich are still rich. So it, it's completely destructive. I can't believe the U.S. government... Well, I do believe the U.S. government's doing it, but it's shocking because what it is is a set of politicians in Washington that fail to do what's right for the American people, and that's put an end to this quantitative easing. It's easier for them to just kick the can down the road and blame somebody else down the line instead of doing what's right for the country and stopping it. To totally agree with you there. Are you worried about... Um uh, racial riots uh, if Obama doesn't get elected, especially living in Detroit, which has a high, you know, uh, it has a high black population. And we've seen um, all kinds of crazy stuff going on lately. I, I, w I just want to tell people, either way, whoever wins a president, you know, we're going to be stuck with the same type of policies that got us into this situation already and that it has nothing to do with who's president and it never will until we really change you know some fundamental things like getting people in a local level but what do you have to what would you like to tell people out there about this kind of divide and conquer that seems to be going on with the mainstream media yeah you know i haven't given it even one ounce of thought whether there would be riots or not i would i would be shocked if there were really i think 
people in Michigan would be would be pretty unhappy if Mitt Romney won. He doesn't have a whole lot of support here, but I would be shocked if there were, if there were any riots. Um, I I hate this divide and conquer men, mentality by the politicians. Republicans blaming Democrats and vice versa. I think it's terrible. Uh, I've really tried to not do that in my campaign at all. I you know I may criticize some things people do i'll do that to either either party it doesn't matter to me but i try and point out specific people or, sp or specific acts that i don't like i don't, don't blame just one party or the other and i think that's really destructive to the country to have this back and forth blame game when really both parties are at fault with the current status of the country right to totally uh coming up with the election what do you have any big events planned or anything what are you going to be doing Election night, Monroe, Michigan, Dolce Vita. Come and join my party, election night party, 8 to midnight. Excellent. And uh, let's say, let me give you two minutes here just to uh, speak out to the people who might be undecided in your district or, or people who maybe want to help you get in, a guy that speaks for truth. Uh, what do you have to say to the people out there? Well, you know, my opponents try, try to spend, you know, spend my involvement in the underwear bomber case against me. But look. I'm just a regular guy. I witnessed something extraordinary. I spoke the truth, and I spoke out to a government that was acting not in the interest of the people. And that's the bottom line with the underwear bomber case. I stand for truth and justice. I stand for the American people. I'm not bought off by corporations. I'm not a career politician at all, and I have no desire to be. I only have one goal in mind, and that's to get to Washington and try and improve this country and shed light on some of these corrupt things going on in Washington. So hopefully have a more transparent government and try and change public opinion, which I think will be the ultimate goal to change how things are done in this country. We can change public opinion, then we can get the right people voted in the office and therefore change the country for the better. Those are my goals. Um, I think they're pretty admir admirable goals, and I'm not your career politician, and don't get stuck um, by the D that follows my name for the Democratic Party because I don't represent the state or national Democratic Party. I represent the people of the party and the people of the United States. So that's what I think people in District 7 in Michigan should know about me. And hopefully I will have their vote on November 6th. Um, also, we're doing some last minute fundraising today. And I would appreciate if any of your listeners would be so kind as to go to my website, Kurt Haskell for, for Congress.com and uh, make a contribution. We're doing a last minute push so that we can do some more radio, robocalls and mailings over the, the last five days of the election. So I would be very thankful for that. Yeah, we've been showing your website up um, throughout this interview. And I think it's despicable that Tim Wahlberg would use the fact that you witnessed a uh, potential terrorist event and spoke out against it and didn't didn't fall for the fact that they said no you didn't see what you really saw you didn't see that there was no sharp dressed man there was none of that you know and and you stuck to your guns and that really needs to be commended you could have shut up you could have just gone along like most of the other people did you you were contacted by other people that said hey i saw something else too you know i, I what what they're saying isn't right and you had the cojones to sit there and say no this is wrong all the way up till the end so i i really really think I hope you win and I hope you can really get out there and, do, and make some of these changes because it's got to start on the local level it's not a national election that's going to change the course of this country we got to start at the grassroots the ground level and build it up right well th this is a pretty high level that I'm running for actually you know this is United States Congress so this is in a, a small position I'd be off to Washington so and hopefully be the next person to actually represent the people, the people of the United States, which I think is sorely lacking other than a couple, couple congressmen right now. But I think it's desperately needed other than to have people in Washington that represent the large corporations. Yeah, and people yeah. speak out against it. The numbers show it, that people are dissatisfied with the current government. Let's get new people in there. Let's see what happens, especially with Kurt. I mean, I've, I've known Kurt. I've met him personally, and I can't tell you. I can't see a better person going up there to represent. You stuck to your guns from the beginning. You know, you you come, you you spoke out, and you didn't stop. And that's got to be commended on a lot of levels. So, best of luck to you, Kurt. You're running in District Seven in Michigan. Is that correct? Yep, that's right. All right. Well, don't forget to go out and vote. 
Uh, all you District 7 people out there in Michigan, vote for uh, Kurt Haskell. I'm going to go ahead and endorse him. Um, you know, I've, I've had a couple people running for Congress here, and Libertarians, Democrats, you know, hey, if you're for the people, that's who I'm for. Kurt, thanks for coming on the show today, and best of luck to you next Tuesday. Glad to be on. Thanks for having me back on. Hopefully we'll do this thing on Tuesday. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Well, there goes Kurt Haskell. Gentleman who's got, you know, uh, let me tell you, to sit there and speak out against the FBI, you know, government officials, the local courts, I mean, over and over again, just to stand up and really try to make a difference. He didn't sit down. He didn't just say, well, you know, maybe, maybe what the government's telling me is true. No, he saw with his own two eyes what happened there that day. And now, you know, the fact that he's running for Congress, it, this is somebody who really wants to make a difference in this world. So if you can give him your support, I think that'd be great. That's our show for today. Uh, if you want to get a magazine here, our new InfoWars magazine, let me tell you, it'll wake up a lot of people. And this, this new issue is trying to deprogram the zombies out there that are in your culture. You know them. They're the ones who aren't really interested in what's going on. They're more interested in football or, you know, dancing with the stars or any of that garbage. And, you know, while that's good every once in a while, this will wake people up and get people thinking about the real issues, the real power brokers who control the society, not left, right, not any of that bull that we go and talk about all the time. And uh, with that, that's going to be our show. And we'll be back tomorrow with another great show. Paul Joseph Watson is going to be sitting in. We're going to have one of the producers of The Great Culling. So with that, I'm Rob Dew, and this is InfoWars Nightly News. Thanks for watching.